Hey, welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques, and today we're going to talk about how and when to chain tack. Someone who has experience with a mix of sewing but wants to get into the niche of bridal sewing? Well, welcome to Bridal Sewing Techniques. This channel is for you. So like I said, today we're going to talk about how and when to chain tack. But when I say chain tack, maybe you don't recognize that term. Um, the same stitch or crochet type tack is called many different things. I've heard it called chain tacking. I've heard it called tagging or tagging the train. I've heard it called stabilizing tacks. I've heard it called uh, crochet stitch. There's a lot of different names. Um, in my studio, I usually call them stabilizing tacks, um, but for searchability for this video, I'm mostly going to be talking about chain tacking today. So maybe you've seen this, a seamstress uh, working away on a dress and her fingers are just flying and there's something kind of growing out of the thread. Well, it's a crochet tack, um, a crochet stitch or a chain tack, like I was saying. Um, and we use this um, to make lingerie strap guards. Um, that's a very common place that you will see this stitch or this tack. Um, I am getting ready to also upload a video um, using this very footage showing how to do the lingerie strap. Um, so look forward to that. I thought about lumping them together in the same video because it is the same technique, but for searchability for people, I wanted to go ahead and separate them. So be on the lookout. But this is definitely something I wanted to include is the lingerie strap guard. And then this is showing a bust pad that has been sewn across the top to the inside of a gown. And you can see that chain stitch there ha is holding the bottom of the bust pad to the gown so that it can't flip up. Now here's me starting. I'm just using some high contrast thread. I'm going to lock that knot and I am going to show you how to get this started, okay? So when you first come through with your first stitch, you're gonna leave a loop, and I'm gonna do this slow mo for you. So you're going to put your fingers through this loop. I'm using my, um, I'm using my left hand in this just for the ease of filming. I would probably more often use my right hand though. Um, but basically, you're going to reach through that loop and grab a hold of that thread that is coming out of the eye of your needle. Your needle, the, the hand that's holding that needle, that needle, you're going to want to keep it nice and firm and stable. You're going to be pulling against the needle the whole time, and you're going to let the other hand be the one that does the resistance with the fingers. Um, and then you're going to sew a knot through the top when you're done. I'll show you that in greater detail in a minute. This is what happens if you don't sew a knot through it. It just completely unravels. This is actually a crochet stitch. Those of you who crochet, you're going to recognize this. So again, you're going to reach through the loop and just keep grabbing that thread that's coming out of the eye of the needle. And you can get quite fast with this, as you can see. And then you're going to stitch through that last loop and that's going to knot it for you. And then you're going to go ahead and hook that either to the other side or to a snap or something. Okay, so I've sped this up so you don't have to watch that part of the detail anymore. But I am going to show you um, how you can tack the two layers of a dress together. This is at the side seams. So I'm going to knot the end of this chain tack. And then I'm going to tack it to the side seam of the lining layer. And this is usually you're going to have a chain that's about an inch long. It can be um, a little longer sometimes or a little tighter sometimes. If it's a very thick dress. Um, you don't want to make the, the chain tack too short. You do want to give it some room to float. Um, now I'm showing you this on the inside and you'll often see this at the side seams, but what I showed you before is sometimes they'll just do from the manufacturer a large loop stitch and that's just as fine as long as you're using good strong thread 
go ahead and use that loop stitch. If ever I see a mixture of tacking, it'll be more like a chain tack at the side seams and then these looser, bigger tacks all along the waist. And here's an example of the chain stitch going through several layers of a train. So it's chained from the satin to the lace layer, and then we just have a single very light tack going from the lace layer to the tool layer. And you'll see that sometimes the different strengths of the tacks, just because you don't want something really thick going on right below the tool. Um, but you will find that um, these, these tacking, the stabilizing tacks that you do in the train, can really bring a train into order and it can make all the difference in the world. It's actually one of my favorite parts of the alterations process is to just kind of bring the train together, you know, get all the layers stacked together um, and tag the train together or put those stabilizing tacks in. It's quite rewarding and beautiful and it makes um, the train so much more manageable on the wedding day. Do stay tuned for my next upload, How to Sew the Lingerie Strap Guards. And also, please like, share, and subscribe. If you've already subscribed, hit that bell and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Please, as always, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Maybe if you do things differently, you can share with us nicely how uh, you like to sew differently. Um, and we can all learn from each other and strengthen the bridal sewing techniques community.